My name is Todd McLeod and I am tenured faculty in computer information technology at Fresno City College. I'm also adjunct faculty in computer science at California State University Fresno and it is with some reservation that I teach you this. So if you want to protect your privacy online and with some reservation I show you this because that could be used for good and you know privacy is important it's one of the founding principles of our country the United States of America that you know we have due process <laughs> and that we're all entitled to a certain amount of privacy and protecting your privacy can also be used for nefarious reasons and so that's why I have some reservation about showing it but this is a tool and I'm I am the instructor and so it's kinda like going to the shooting range and learning how to use a gun I'm teaching you how to use a really powerful tool and whether or not you use it for good to protect society for the greater good of everybody in you know our civilization you know to keep everybody safe to hunt and provide meat whether or not you use the tool for good or if you use it for bad <laughs> to go out and hurt people to propagate crimes to do things which are harmful that's you that's on your ethics your conscience me I'm just showing you how to use the tool I'm the firearms instructor so the first thing you need to understand is uh, when you connect to the internet and here here's you on your computer when you connect to the internet you go through an ISP and an ISP is your internet service provider it's whoever you pay to get internet access you're paying somebody every every month unless you're stopping by Starbucks you're paying somebody every month to get online and uh, and so that's your internet service provider and your internet service provider sees everything you do they see everything you do unless you take stops unless you take steps to protect it so one of the one of the first things you could do is use incognito browsing and so inside Google Chrome and uh, I recommend Google Chrome is the browser you should use for just general day-to-day -day use uh, second to that would be uh, Microsoft Edge but inside Google Chrome you could go into new incognito window so what does that mean when you come into an incognito window this means that the websites I visit the websites I visit are still going to are not going to be able to track my information only the websites I visit my ISP is still going to be able to see what I'm doing and there's a nice warning here when you launch this pages you view in incognito tabs won't stick around in your browser's history so they're not going to be in your history so if you're concerned about you know like not having somebody in your family know that hey you went to these websites that this is one of the things that I mean it's going to stop your browser from recording that when you do searches that auto completion it's going to not record any of that or pop up things in your auto completion that you've been to the site before it's going to stop cookies from being put on your website so other third party websites that you're visiting won't be able to track you uh, and your search history after you've closed all of your incognito tabs tags uh, tabs won't be tracked any files you download or bookmarks you create will be kept so uh, however you aren't invisible Google going incognito doesn't hide your browsing from your employer your internet service provider or the websites you visit right so if you do go to a website they're not going to be able to track you but they will still see information that like hey this is the ISP uh, internet service provider you're coming from and they'll see your IP address stuff and uh, and so that that's uh, that's still not protecting your identity completely so this is just the first step it's just kind of very thin step for protecting your identity online going incognito and your ISP you'll still will still be seeing and keeping logs of everything you do so that's just the first step so the next thing we could do to protect our identity is we could use a VPN what does a VPN do so uh, I search for does your VPN connection go through your ISP and uh, and here is a diagram I just wanted to find a nice picture that shows what happens so here you are in your computer and then you connect to another computer and you do this with encryption okay so everything is encrypted and you're still going through your ISP because that's what gives you connection to the internet but first you connect to this computer you make a secure encrypted connection and then all of your traffic is encrypted it's jumbled it can't be read and so even though it's going through your ISP 
it's all just a, a jumble of characters and it can't be read it's all encrypted so what is this virtual private network that's what that means right here this network is private because it's encrypted what does this virtual private network allow you to do well you're going to use this computer here as your launch pad to, to everything you do on, on the web on the internet and so you connect to your VPN everything's in encrypted and you say hey I want to go look at World Wide Web you know whatever <laughs> not even gonna speculate I want to go look at World Wide Web whatever that request gets encrypted it gets sent to your VPN that VPN decrypts your request sees that you want to go to www whatever it goes and gets that web page brings it back encrypts it sends it back to you and then your computer decrypts it and so nobody knows what you're looking at because everything that is coming out of your computer is encrypted and everything coming back to your computer is encrypted and and your what you what you're asking for is encrypted and what you what you wanted to see comes back and it's encrypted and so your ISP doesn't know what you're looking at and this VPN is the only one that knows hey this is what you are looking at so the catch here is you have to trust your VPN and and how do you find a VPN which is trustworthy if you're trying to protect your identity what you know is the VPN being run by the NSA <laughs> or the CIA the National Security Agency or the Central Intelligence Agency is it being run by that or uh, is your VPN keeping logs and so if you know somebody came and said hey we need to find this person and uh, give us your logs would they have to give the logs alright so you need to be able to trust your VPN and how can you find a trust worthy VPN so here's a core article can one track my real IP address when I use VPNs nice article it recommends these two websites but then I went to uh, torrent freak so a torrent is when people are it's a peer-to-peer -peer network where people are basically doing intellectual property crime <laughs> they're stealing movies they're stealing songs and uh, and some some college students think of this as getting songs and movies for free but it's a crime <laughs> Right? You're stealing, you're ripping off somebody's intellectual property. Somebody owns that. They, they paid to create it. They worked to create it. They're trying to sell it to make money, to feed their kids and buy their yachts. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, you're, you're stealing it. That's torrent, all right? So that's torrent and peer-to-peer -peer file share. But uh, here at Torrent Freak, these are people who are concerned about whether or not they're being tracked because they know they're doing something illegal. And so Torrent Freak has this article, which VPN services take your anonymity, that's a hard word for me to say, seriously, 2016 edition. And so when I came in here, the first thing I looked for was Sweden. And the reason I looked for Sweden is because if you take a look at uh, where WikiLeaks is located, and above all else, this website wants to make sure that privacy is protected. So what did they do? WikiLeaks is located in Sweden. Why are they located in Sweden? because Sweden has like uh, high regard for personal privacy and protecting people's privacy. And so they have some of the, the toughest laws against like, you know, requiring computer companies to keep track of users and to disclose logs and all that stuff. So WikiLeaks is in Sweden. And, uh, you know, first thing I did when I came to this recommendation, uh, VPNs was search for Sweden. And so the, the only company in here in this recommended list which is only located in Sweden, and all the questions they ask the companies are right up here, at the very top. What countries are your servers located in? Right, the only one that only has servers located in Sweden is Azire VPN. Right, it's registered in Sweden, and uh, it's all about Sweden. And so this would be the one that I would use. And that said, is like you know, if the NSA and the CIA wanted to put up a front. They have the resources to put together an operation where it all looks legitimate and this still could totally be run by the CIA or the NSA. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's your, you know, that's what I'd recommend as a, a VPN. So we've learned about incognito browsing. We've learned about VPNs, virtual private networks. And what you do is you just come down here and you pay like five bucks a month. And, uh, and then you're able to have a secure encryption to them and then go do stuff from that, that, that server. All right, and if you don't want them to track your credit card, you could even go in and you could pay with like, set up some sort of anonymous email, but that'd still be traceable to you. But you could get Bitcoin, and so Bitcoin is currency which 
you know, hides your identity and you could pay with Bitcoin if you don't even want to use a credit card because then that's, you could create a completely like, you know, who you are doesn't, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, hide your identity. But then your IP address is still visible to these people because they're sending stuff back to you. And your IP address is your address on the web, where you are on the web. All right, so that's desire. So how, how would you then kind of take one more step to protect your identity if you really wanted to get hardcore and do everything you could to protect your privacy? The next thing you do is you'd use Tor. And Tor stands for the Onion Router. And they call it the Onion Router because there's all these different layers of encryption to you know using a Tor browser and using the Tor network. And so it's like an onion, you just keep peeling off layers. And the way it works, just in real basic terms, is that you know once you start using a Tor browser, you make a request and it goes to the next person in the Tor network, and then that person sends it to the next person, and it just keeps peeling off these layers of encryption. And, and, and there's this chain of connections that your request gets sent through and returned through. But each, each, each point in the connection, each node in the connection, only knows where, where the request came from and where it went from. So it doesn't know all the way upstream or downstream. It only knows the step before and the step after. So there's no, there's no like one person in the connection that knows uh, where this originally came from. And, uh, and so it's all anonymous. Um, so that's just like the next layer of encryption. And so, you know, here I just found it interesting. Has FBI, NSA run any commercial VPNs? And it says, how would you know? Right? It's never been leaked or disclosed, but that was just an interesting thing to look at. So for a Tor browser, you just search Tor browser. And when you do that, you could come here and you could download a, a browser. And so then this would be its own unique browser, not Google Chrome, not Microsoft edge or internet explorer right but it's a tor browser it'd be on the onion network you download it and you install it and you start using the tor network and then all your stuff is encrypted so if you choose to use tor over a vpn the benefits are that you should be again hiding from your isp the fact that you're using tor so this means that your your isp doesn't even know you're using tor right and so if you use tor that's going to be a red flag right just right off the bat you're going to get put on lists and so, um, you know, using a VPN and then using Tor protects your identity even further. All right, so that's uh, those are the things that you could do to protect your identity. And uh, and the last thing I was thinking I'd talk about is just torrent, but I feel like this video is about keeping your privacy online, uh, you know, and making sure that you remain anonymous if you want to remain anonymous. And then those are the steps that you would take to to do that. Uh, make sure you check out this website I'm building, greatercommons.com. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I'm an academic, a teacher, and this is like for the greater good of all humanity where anybody could teach anything and anybody could go there and learn. And uh, so if you wanted to teach something that you know to everybody else in the world and put together curriculum, not just a bunch of YouTube videos, but like here are the 25 videos in this order that you should watch to learn this subject, whether it's, you know, how to do Tor browsing or or what, whatever you're into, how to cook, uh, you could create that training and then put it up there and sell it for like 20 bucks and, and, uh, and then help the world, you know, for very nominal people. For a very nominal fee, people could learn what it is that you have to share. So we all have something valuable to share with the world and we all have stuff we need to learn from each other. We all have something to learn, all of a sudden teach. So check this out, it's gonna be launching soon, Greater Commons. All right, that's a little bit about keeping your identity protected online. And uh, if I was to choose a VPN right now, I'd be choosing these guys right here. Hope you found this helpful.